Holy Spirit speak to us this morning. That we live here with hope and with assurance. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Job, in chapter 14, verse 17 to 19, Job says that there is hope for the tree. That when it is cut and the stumps and the roots are still in the ground, the tree has hope that one day it will sprout again at the scent of dew. That is what rains upon it. So, what all what the stump is waiting for in the soil, in the ground, is what? It's rain. And the stump knows very well, is very sure and confident that, that no matter what, no matter the dry season, one day, one day, the rain will come down. So even the storm in the soil in the ground believes and knows and have hope that one day at the scent of rain, at the drop of rain, I will sprout again. Hallelujah. So I want to assure you this morning that there is no soul. Is there any hope in our world today? Is there any hope in our world today? Church, there is no hope for the world, but there is hope for the church. There is no hope for the world. The world doesn't have any hope. The confusion and the battle and the war is going on in, you know, from the family level to the national level to global level. I want you to understand that there is no hope for the world. But there is hope for the church. Amen. And that is why you must continue to abide under the feet. <coughs> And under the shadow of the Almighty. Continue to abide under the shadow <coughs> of the Almighty. Amen. And if you abide under his shadow, church, I want to tell you that no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, no matter what you are going through, I want to tell you that there is hope. There is hope. Biden doesn't have any hope. Akufaru doesn't have any hope. Putin doesn't have any hope. Name them. <coughs> no president, no leader has any hope. Thank you. Thank you. No leader has any hope. In fact, even in our homes, we don't have hope. We don't have hope. In our workplaces, we don't have hope. The only hope we have is that we are children of God. Hallelujah. We are children of God and therefore there is hope. There is hope. I want to read the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <coughs> 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 19. I've already read this first scripture from Job 14, 17 to 9. I've already read that. But let's go to this scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Please take your Bible and open your Bible. Not your phone. Please, you just take your Bible. Paul says that if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all men the most peaceable. If in this life alone that we have hope, then amongst all men, we are the most miserable people on earth. We are the most peaceable people on earth. If the word of God is false, if we can't trust it, if the word of God is not credible, that we can trust it, it's not trustworthy. The church, I want you to understand that the church is the most 
miserable, pathetic, pitiable institution on earth. So if you are here this morning and you don't have any hope in the church, then I want you to understand that you are the most pitiable person on earth. Hallelujah. Paul is saying that it's only in this life that we have hope in Christ Jesus. Then we are the most pitiable. But thank God that our hope transcends this material world. Our hope transcends, goes beyond what we can see now. It goes beyond the barriers and the boundaries of what we can see. The hope of the church goes beyond what we can see. It goes beyond our economy. It goes beyond our institutions. It goes beyond our money, our finances, and our corporations. The hope that the church has goes beyond that. And that's the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. And this one, I want you to, I want you to question you. That you have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have hope in him. That no matter the challenges, that no matter the storm, the turbulence, you know that this man will be able to uphold you. Jesus is able and more than able to strengthen you, to hold your hands, to cross over to the other side. Jesus, he has the, the, the power to do that. So I want you to have hope in God. All hope is not gone yet. Don't throw in the towel now. Don't, 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 don't vacate your position now. Don't say that I'm useless. I'm, I amount to nothing. And all, my life is miserable. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, all hope is not gone. No matter what is going on in the marriage, no matter what is going on in the family, no matter what is going on in the workplace and in the, in, in the nation, there is hope for us. In fact, when COVID struck, People thought that the world was going to end. People thought that that was, no, the world was going to end. That was the end of mankind. Because this thing was so, so, so scary. Government officials were dying. Government officials were dying out of COVID. Rich people were dying out of COVID. People, health, you know, and health people, and doctors and nurses, and help, they were all dying. And therefore, people thought that all hope was gone. But the church was praying. The church was praying. So Abraham said, ask God, that are you going to destroy the righteous and the, and the wicked one? God said, no, I'm not going to destroy all of them. If only I find 50 righteous people in there, I'm not going to destroy them. So God had a prayer of the church. Hallelujah. And today, COVID is no more. Even though it's there. But now it's like malaria. Hallelujah. Our God is a God of hope. Church, let's have hope in God. Let's have hope in God. If you really don't have it, your pocket is empty. Continue to have hope in God. Because emptiness is one of the attributes of hope. Emptiness. That you don't see anything working for you. You don't see anything forthcoming. That is where you must have hope. Because Paul says that, how can, can you hope in something that you see? If you can see, it's no hope. It's no hope. But because you don't see it, but we believe in the one who has promised us, we know that it will come to pass. Hallelujah. We know that it will come to pass. You've been struggling and been fighting with some conditions in your life, some situations in, in your life that you are crying and you know, shedding tears. You are asking yourself, until when? Until when? Am I going to get over this? Until when? I want to tell you that the time is coming. There is hope. There is hope for you. Hallelujah. If you're only in this, in this life that we have hope in Christ, we are for all men the most peaceable. But we are not. Let me take you into some little Greek. The word hope, which is healthy in Greek, it means that expectation, trust, and confidence. As expectation, trust, and confidence. It comes from the root word elpo, which means to anticipate with pleasure. 
that you are so joyful, you are so happy. You know, if I, you haven't seen it, but you know you are so happy that it is coming. It is coming with pleasure. And to welcome. Everything is an expectation of what is guaranteed. So because God has spoken, the promise is not from any man. The promise is not from your wife, not from your husband, from your, 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 your church leader, not from your pastor. Because the promise is from God, it is guaranteed that it will come to pass. Because God has spoken. And the Bible says that God has sworn by his own name that as for, for blessings, he will bless us. And as for multiplying, he will multiply us. And because this God is trustworthy and faithful, he will do it. And therefore, let's trust him. Let's trust God. For you do it. John Piper puts it in this way. Christian hope is a confidence that something will come to pass because God has promised it, it will come to pass. Then, what has God told you? What have you received from the mouth of the Lord? What have you received? I want you to have hope in God. Church, you the Christian worship center, let's have hope. Children of God, let us have hope. No matter what, let's have hope. The economy of America will cram- can crumble. Our accounts in the bank can, can, can crumble. Our homes and our business can catch fire. But we know that our Redeemer liveth. Paul said that I know whom I believe. And I believe and I know I'm confident that he's able to keep what I have entrusted unto him unto that day. He's able to keep what I have entrusted unto him unto that day. So your love that you have entrusted send into the hands of God. God is able to keep it until that day. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Bible says that even though you walk through fire, I'll be with you. You walk through water, I'll be with you. Hallelujah. The fire and the water will come. The challenges will come. But the Lord is saying that I will be with you. I will be with you. Hallelujah. So church, God is with us. But says Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Now let me take you through just about five attributes of hope and then we'll pray. In Romans chapter 8 verse 24 to 25, this is what Paul says. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what is he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. You eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So hope cannot be seen. You can't see hope. Second, perseverance in our hope brings hope. Perseverance in our faith brings hope. Romans 5, 3 to 4. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope, and hope does not disappoint. Hallelujah. Hope does not disappoint. You can never hope in God and be disappointed. See, having faith in God, Having hope in God, it's not like you are taking lotto. No. If you have faith in man, you are taking lotto. Because it's 50 50. Hallelujah. Even a 50 50 is the person that is so, the person is so faithful. Even that one is 50 50. But when you go, it's 100%. You cannot fail. It's not like you have stuck it and you lose or you win. Once you have hope in God, church, it will surely, no matter how long it takes, it will surely come to pass. No matter how sick you are, no matter the number of doctors who have attended to you, the diagnosis and the treatment, I want to tell you that God is faithful and he will do it. I want you to strengthen your faith and your hope in God. In God. Because the world is not going to get better now. It's going to, going, to, going to get better. We are going to get worse and worse and worse. This world is going to get worse and worse. This world is going to get expensive, more expensive. Look at Columbus now, Ohio now. Now Ohio is getting expensive. Because Ohio now and Columbus is the fastest growing city in America now. The fastest growing city in America now. And therefore, uh, Ohio is going to go, get more expensive. It's going to be like New York and Virginia and all those big cities. So your life is not going to be easy again. And I'm going to say that because of that, I'm going to relocate to another, another state. No, stay here. Stay here. Isaac stayed there. 
and the Lord blessed me. In a time of famine, he stayed there. And the Lord blessed me. And I believe and I know, if we hope in God, the Lord, no matter how hard this city will become, how hard this city will become, God will make a way for us. There is hope, church. There is hope. I believe that there is hope. So I want you to believe with me. The third one, hope brings joy and peace. Proverbs 10, 28. The hope of the righteous will be gladness. If you go on to Proverbs uh, uh, 23, verse 17 and 18, the wise man Solomon says that, do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day, for surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. And your hope will not be cut off. God will not cut off your hope. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.27. Let me, let me skip that and go read one more and then we'll pray. Let me go to Corinthians 15 verse 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith also is empty. Church, what crowns and stimulates and strengthens our hope is that Jesus Christ, he died and rose up again. Jesus Christ died and rose up again. And that's why Paul is saying that if it's only in this life that we have hope in Christ, then we are the most people, amongst all people, we are the most pitiable. But Christ Jesus, for him to give us hope and to assure us that he's trustworthy, that if we hope in him, he will do it. The Bible says he died and on, on the third day, he rose up again. For that as well and that hope, church, let's have hope in God in every situation. In every situation. When all hope was gone and Peter had toiled on the whole night and a, a professional fisherman has toiled the whole night and could not catch any fish. The Bible says that when Jesus met him, he said that launch into the deep. All hope was gone. But when Peter listened and obeyed and launched into the deep, the Bible said he could not even pull the net because of the number of fish that this man caught. Church, there is hope. There is hope. Maybe you are not checking your prayer, your request to God. Maybe you are not consulting, you are not, you are not petitioning him. You think you can use your own strength and your own mind to do it. Your own academic strength to do it. You think you can use your own finance to do it. Church, let's go on to God in prayer. Because there is hope for us. Hebrews chapter 11 says that faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for. So that means that our hope has substance. Our hope has substance. Yes, that we haven't seen it yet. But it has substance. And it's prayer that will bring it in, into reality. It's prayer. Continue to hope in God. This year, 2024, continue to hope in God and stand firm on the word of God and believe that the Lord who has promised, he will do it. The Lord will do it no matter what. He will do it. Hallelujah. May God bless you this morning. May he bless you. I believe. See, like I told you, I, I, I've gone through a lot of, a lot of health challenges and a lot of challenges. And sometimes I even feel that I, no, I, I, I'm going to die. Yeah. And I feel that I, I, I think my time might come. But before I realize, I receive strength again. I've gone through from, from my infancy. No, I've gone through a lot of conditions. A lot of conditions. There's a time that I was sleeping on a bench. You know what you call bench in Ghana? That thing. I was sleeping on a bench at night. I woke up and there was this black cobra sleeping under under the the bench. Black cobra, black cobra sleeping under the bench. So wow. This is sometimes I think that I believe that he came to watch over me to protect me, so nobody will come. God can use the enemy to protect you. He can use the enemy because he's suffering. He can use the enemy to protect you. Black cobra, big one, was lying there. One day I went out and I was coming home. And it was raining. I entered the house and here was the other black cobra. 
in my house, right in the center of the house. And his head was like this. You know how they, you know. Tell me. A lot of people, a lot of people. I have sat on five things. Sat on ten things. Sat on ten things. It, you see, God, this man, this God, let's ask God. Let's ask God. Let's have hope in him. If God has assignment for you, let me tell you, Satan himself can come. He will not, cannot, he cannot do anything. Satan. So that's why you don't have to fear any, any Satan. Don't fear any Satan. Unless, unless we are not in line with God's word. Hallelujah. Even if we falter and we come back to you, that the prodigal son, but said, I told his father, give me what befalls me. Give me my portion of your inheritance. Give it to me. And the the father divided the inheritance in two, gave him his part. The pastor, he left and went into a far country. And he spent, he spent it on prodigal living. Prodigal living. Drinking. Women. 